All right. Uh, oh, welcome everybody. Um, uh, welcome back. Uh, or, or, um, I'm coming back, I guess is a better way. Um, I took <clears throat> the last month off from recording uh, presentation, uh, recording classes uh, to focus on the um, election. Uh, the, the, the very important and um, uh, election that just happened um, and super <laughs> pretty happy with the outcome um, but uh, for those you know thank you everyone who's who worked on that who made the phone calls and text banks and everything um, I, and a reminder this is you know this doesn't fix everything but this was a, a big step in the right direction um, and also uh, for those who can still help out um, another reminder um, the election if you watch if you're seeing this before January 5th um, the election isn't over we, we have that Senate runoff in Georgia for those two seats and um, that's gonna you know the outcome of that is, is going to decide if um, the Democrats hold the Senate and we pass all kinds of COVID relief funds and public options and raising the minimum wage and, you know, food worker, you know, um, rights bills and all these things that are just sitting there waiting to get, you know, um, or if it goes to the Republicans, it's going to be Mitch McConnell who's going to, you know, basically uh, continue focusing on um, uh, uh, holding the line on, on conservative, you know, pushing conservative judges and things like that and ignoring everything else. So um, this is a it's, it's a big you know deal so please if you if you still have some time check out you know Stacey Abrams uh, fair fight check out um, we actually have a um, go to um, or uh, go to the people school of DC I have a whole page on on the title menu about ways you know from donating to, to, to making phone calls and text and bank, banking to, to um, help enrich for people to vote to get people out to the polls um, so we're gonna need a huge effort so if you see this before January 5th definitely check it out and at the very least you know please make a donation if not um, uh, to help out as much as you can but um, anyway getting back to the class um, so yeah so I took a month off you know to focus on the election but now I spent the last um, uh, two weeks just getting this <clears throat> the next class going and, 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 it's, and it's ready to be recorded hopefully I'll get I'll get it all recorded um, um, in the next couple of days um, but I'm really excited about this class um, so reminder we went a little bit out of order our last class was the, the political right um, class which I, I did you know um, I wanted to do before the election um, just to kind of catch the, the relevance of everything um, and, um, but uh, um, before that, um, uh, we had did the class about the U.S. foundations of, of white supremacy, and we talked about um, how a lot of our, you know, in the many ways that this country was established as a slaveocracy, and then it was established, you know, giving the most power in, in our con constitution and our government to, to slave states um, through a whole different measures, having the constitution protect slavery in a whole bunch of ways, and, and, and um, just creating this foundation through immigration and through voter suppression, um, through all these different means to, to create basically a white nation. Um, and, in the U.S., um, so th that that was a big step, just establishing these, these foundations. And we're going to spend, you know, many more classes talking about how the foundations evolved to things like redlining, um, mass incarceration, you know, things like that. But um, one, um, I wanted to, to jump in this class and um, put this class in the next because um, this is a very important part of this um, of of, you know, of the white supremacy in, in this country is not only having these institutions, you know, um, but also controlling the narrative, you know. Of, of these institutions controlling, you know, um, and that's often done, um, you know, starting from colonialism, basically just uh, erasing indigenous history, erasing, you know, the histories of, of, of black people, of, of, of labor, of, of, of women, um, and replacing it with this Eurocentric white history that, that that's creates these narratives that, that not only justify a lot of these foundations and, and white supremacy and, and, and slaveocracies and things like that, um, but um, in, in many ways it makes it invisible. <laughs> it makes Makes it just seem like the norm you know um you know this is just our democracy this is just our you know founding fathers you know create you know all this stuff um and, and, and you know it, it, it removes you know all the um the, the real history that uh, and all the things that were really happening and, and, and then that's really where we get to this massive population of people that just you know voted you know 74 million people just you know watched trump <laughs> um during his first you know pre presidency and decided to vote you know for four more years um and, and that has a lot to do with just these narratives that that, that people are believing into and um and, and um, that a 
lot of that comes with uh, just our whitewashing of our history. Um, so this class is gonna, um, we're gonna explore um, many different ways, probably not all the ways, but many different ways that, 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 that we whitewash our history. Um, <clears throat> and, um, but before I, I jump into the, the menu and talk about the topics of each um, chapter, I wanted to play uh, a couple, I wanna show a couple quotes and a couple videos just to kind of create a context of what we're, we're trying to, um, trying to, to, to um, cover in this class. You know, um, so we're gonna watch uh, a quick video on, with, from James Baldwin, from Brian Stevens, from Equal Justice Initiative, um, and even John Oliver, Oliver did this really great, you know, um, uh, uh, segment on, on U.S. history. Um, so I'm just going to kind of watch this and read a couple quotes, just to kind of get the, create the context of this class, and then we're going to dive into uh, the, the, the nuts and bolts of everything. So um, this is one of my first <laughs> favorite quotes um, uh, from James Baldwin: uh, "White people are trapped in a the history they don't understand," um, and that just perfectly summarizes, you know, of, of this country, a massive part of, of the white population. This country is, is we literally don't understand our history. And as a previous high school history teacher who thought I was doing a great job, you know, I was a cool teacher teaching Howard Zinn and things like that and, and Malcolm X's biography, but looking back, like majority of what I taught was just simply not true. Um, and, and a lot of this is not true because um, a lot of it was false because of, um, you know, some of it was propaganda, you know, like, uh, oh, you know, we fought the Civil War because of anything but slavery you know um, um but then other of it was just a lot of the submissions you know like um teaching about the you know fdr's new deal and um how great it was which is true um but meant not mentioning it was only for white people um which we'll talk a lot more about that in another class um so um so this is where you know we find ourselves where a lot of white people are very confused uh, they don't know why people you know there's massive demonstrations in the streets why there's inequity why people are just upset you know um and, and a lot of this is, is because of the the, the, the false histories and, 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 and the whitewash histories that we're, we're taught so really love this quote um um but um yeah i want to move move forward i want to start out with brian stevens video um uh we're going to talk you know show a couple videos from him throughout the class and um and talk a little bit about some of his initiatives he's doing um it's amazing. he's he started the, the equal justice initiative um which is an amazing organization that <laughs> focuses on you know um criminal justice reform um and, and giving representation to, to people that don't often get representation um in our criminal justice system but um from there they just kind of expanded on, on um, and really focus on capturing histories from segregation to lynching to, to mass incarceration to slavery. Um, they built the, the um, lynching museum in, in, in Montgomery, Alabama, um, and it's just on a huge part about, you know, kind of unwhitewashing our history. So I'm going to play this video to start off our class. We have been practicing uh, silence about our history for a very long time. In this country, we don't talk about slavery. We don't talk about lynching. We don't talk about segregation. We have a hard time talking about race. Uh, and it has burdened us. We don't think it's odd that we don't talk about this history. We actually think it's odd when somebody tries to talk about it. If we react to the effort of trying to talk about it, as if that's the threat, not our continued silence. We're doing a lot of damage uh, to each succeeding generation. Uh, it's the 21st century, and there's still a presumption of dangerousness and guilt that gets assigned to black and brown people in this country. haven't created spaces in America that deal honestly with the legacy of slavery. You know, my view is that the great evil of American slavery wasn't involuntary servitude and forced labor. It was the narrative of racial difference that we created to justify it. We said black people are different than white people. They can't do this. They can't do that. The Supreme Court said there are three fifths human. And this ideology of white supremacy, that narrative of racial difference, that was the true evil. So for me, slavery doesn't end in 1865, it just evolves. It turns into decades where we have terrorism and lynching and our courts and our systems of government tolerated 
black people being pulled out of their homes and hung from trees, sometimes on the courthouse lawn. The legal system, the rule of law was complicit. The black people in Boston, the black people in Cleveland, in Chicago, in Detroit, in Los Angeles, didn't go to those communities as immigrants looking for new economic opportunities. They went there as refugees and exiles from terror in the American South. And then we lived through this period of civil rights struggle that had some success, but it didn't ultimately confront that narrative of racial difference. And so now we have a system of criminal justice administration that is very racialized, where we tolerate bias and, uh, and inequality. All right. Um, if you ever have a chance to go to Al Montgomery, Alabama, definitely check out the, the museum that they set up. But I, I really like um, um, how Brian Stevenson focused on the, the idea that um, the biggest, you know, evil of, of, of slavery um, isn't, you know, the, the, the horrors that, that happened in slavery. That was definitely um, horrific. But um, the, the, it's the legacy, you know, it's the legacy of, of this narrative of racial difference, this narrative of um, that black people are, are, are criminals um, and, and they're rapists and, and they're, 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 you know, bad people that need to be controlled by violence, um, by lynching, by, by, by a violent, you know, police, you know, system. Um, and, and that's a narrative. Um, that was, those are narratives. We talked a lot about this in the slavery class. These are, these are narratives that, that, that were created to, to help justify, one, help that justify slavery, but also after slavery ended, it helped justify um, the, the, you know, the South, you know, white supremacy taking back over the South um, and, um, through voter suppression and lynching and KKK and, and, and um, you know, black codes and Jim Crow and all these horrific things. Um, they created these narratives where well, we had to do this because black people were, were just, you know, um, were, were, were violent and we had to protect, you know, white people through, you know, this violence. And, and that's a narrative that, you know, ultimately created our criminal justice system, created, you know, it, it's ultimately, you know, um, created an enormous amount of implicit bias in all of us um, that, that comes out, you know, through policing, through employment, through, through, you know, banking, through all different things. And that's ultimately what Brian Stevens was talking about is that's ultimately the, the, the worst part of, of of slavery is that legacy that we're still dealing with because we never actually confronted that. We never had a moment to actually recognize that and confront that um, in many ways. Um, we've done just the opposite of that. <laughs> All right. Um, so we talked a lot about Ida B. Wells um, in, in the last class, particularly her work around lynching. Uh, one of the reasons we know, um, you know, um, about the thousands of people that were, were, were lynched, um, mainly black people in the South, but um, it was because of, uh, of Ida B. Wells. Um, she was one of the first to really record this and, and create, you know, um, documentation and, and reports on, on what was happening. Um, and, and if it was not for her, I, that, that would, you know, a lot of this history would be lost. But I uh, really love this quote. She writes, the, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. <laughs> so the next uh, video I wanted to play, um, <laughs> if you've seen the last class, um, um, uh, there's, you know, so when I open all these classes into YouTube, um, uh, YouTube just updated, um, last month, updated their copyright laws, um, and, and uh, they won't let me play uh, or insert, you know, um, certain, you know, um, videos from certain, you know, um, uh, organizations like uh, like uh, HBO. I can't really play HBO um, or Comedy Central stuff anymore because it'll come up as, as copyright infringement, which is fine. I totally respect that. Um, but also, um, what I did is I I, um, I wrote down the, the YouTube video um, and the the People School um, uh, link if you can't find it on YouTube. Um, but I definitely want everyone at this point point if you want to pause the presentation, um, go to YouTube, watch this video uh, from John Oliver. It is a little bit long. It's like twenty minutes or so but um it's really fantastic that um he covers a whole you know array of different ideas and, and, and concepts around our, our how we teach history from our, our inability to really teach slavery um and our inability to connect you know slavery to to the present um to to how we've covered it up through through you know um the adwater and, and republican southern strategy and, and the racial you know um 
uh, um, you know, uh, racial dog whistles to uh, what I think was one of the most important parts is, is towards the end. He talks a lot about um, this idea of American exceptionalism and how a lot of Americans, they don't want to hear this negative history. They, they want to just say everything, you know, uh, there was bad things in the past, but we overcame all of it. It was great, you know, um, and that's just not true. And, 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 um, and that like does a disservice to, to, to the children, um, our children that we're raising right now, um, and, and it does not equip them to really understand our society. Um, so definitely, this is a fantastic video to um, take a you know, second pause, um, watch it on YouTube, and then um, come back um, uh, to our next slide. <clears throat> All right, I wanted to show up another my Angelo um, quote, history, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but if we face it with courage, uh, need not be lived again. All right, so I wanted to, um, just uh, the last thing I wanted to play was a, a quick video from, from James Baldwin. This is um, uh, back in uh, 1965. He, he was invited to the Cambridge um, University to, to um, as this uh, big debate um, um, centered around does the American dream come at the expense of black Americans? Um, so uh, I think this is, you can watch the whole debate. I think it's like an hour long on YouTube. It's really fascinating, really great stuff. Um, but I wanted to show this, this uh, clip that, um, from, from this, a, a, a short, you know, um, uh, tidbit of, of what he said. And Guardian added some, the newspaper added some great, you know, um, footage as well while he's talking. So, it comes as a great shock to discover that the country which is your birthplace and to which you owe your life and your identity has not in its whole system of reality evolved any place for you. <laughs> It comes as a great shock around the age of five or six or seven to discover the flag to which you have pledged allegiance along with everybody else has not pledged allegiance to you. It comes as a great shock to discover that Gary Cooper killing off the Indians when you were rooting for Gary Cooper that the Indians were you. When I was growing up, I was taught in American history books that Africa had no history, and neither did I. That I was a savage, about whom the less said the better, who had been saved by Europe and brought to America. And of course, I believed it. I didn't have much choice. Those are the only books there were. I am stating very seriously, and this is not an overstatement. I think the cotton. And I carried to our end. And I built the railroads under someone else's whip for nothing. For nothing. If one has got to prove one's title to the land, isn't 400 years enough? 400 years, at least three wars. The American soil is full of the corpses of my ancestors. Why is my freedom or my citizenship or my right to live there? How is it concealed? Their question now. What we are not facing is the results of what we've done. What one breaks the American people to do for all our sakes is simply to accept our history until the moment comes when we, the Americans, we, the American people, we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other. Until this moment, there is scarcely any hope for the American dream. Because the people who are denied participation in it by their very presence will wreck it. All right. Well, just love James Baldwin. Um, 
I think the one quote yeah, I wrote in the bottom, the, the one begs the American people to do for all of our sakes is simply to accept our history. Um, and, and that I, I, I really do believe um, if, you know, if everyone knew the, the, the real history uh, of this country and knew, you know, what was going on, um, it not only would, you know, this, you know, today make a lot more sense, um, but also the things that we need to do to, to, to repair the past harm, you know, from reparations to, to you know, for things like from an action and programs to, to, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, to a whole sort of thing, things that we, we really need, um, in this country that, that, um, um, for the most part, most white people um, do not understand um, why we need, uh, and that has a lot to do with the fact that that they're not um, really taught the the, um, our, our, the real history that we of this country, or, or at least the you know the different perspectives of this country, um, historical perspectives. But um, all right, um, last quote, and then we'll, we'll jump into the, the menu. I just want to put this up here. I, I really um, I. I've, we include this quote um, during the colonialism class after we talked about um, the horrific um, colonization of Africa. Um, you know, countries like Congo that that you know lost 20 million people, you know, people to to just the pure European brutality, colonial brutality. Um, so James Baldwin in 1962 wrote, um, "White people were and are astounded by the Holocaust in Germany. They did not know that they could act that way. But I very much um, doubt whether black people were astounded." Um, and that, and that that says a lot to this idea that although you know a lot of white people are, are, are you know are taught these whitewashed histories and and, and um and are the you know a lot of the atrocities we do from from the millions of, of people you know native indigenous people to the, the colonization of Africa the colonization of the majority of the world the brutal colonization where you know hundreds probably hundreds of millions that you know people were, were died horrific ways um you know all of that's kind of whitewashed away from a lot of the um a lot of white people um european and american um but um a lot of the, you know in, you know communities marginalized communities that they're still you know um dealing with you know the the you know the negative realities of white supremacy you know that history you know a lot of that history was never whitewashed um they're fully aware of that um so i think that's a great contrast you know this isn't to minimize the holocaust holocaust was horrific but um it's to also say that um this you know uh, um this isn't the only you know single horrific event that that's happened in the last century or, or two i mean it's it's been um yeah um it, you know it, we've, we've done you know a, a lot of horrific things as well so um but um yeah uh, anyway okay i'll leave it at that um all right so um I, you know so you know Today's class, you know, we're going to kind of talk about, um, you know, the, our, our educational system, different ways that, you know, what it means to whitewash a lot of the curriculum, different ways that we whitewash, different movements, and, and different movements that kind of unwhitewash. So we're going to talk about that um, really quickly. The, uh, give a really quick brief history of our U.S. educational systems, um, how it got founded, you know, and how it evolved over the last two centuries. We're going to talk about um, different, you know, what it means to whitewash U.S. history and the different ways that we do that. Um, we're going to talk about probably one of the biggest ways that we um, we whitewash history is uh, the lost cause of Confederacy movement. Um, so this is how we um, kind of you know downplay the, the Civil War and slavery and and, and, the, and and you know this fight of legacy versus you know heritage versus propaganda or things like that. Um, and we're going to talk about the birth of the written U.S. Black History movement um, for Carter uh, Woodson. Um, I'm going to talk about how he helped establish this. Um, uh, I mean, there's always been black history, but you help establish it as the institution of black history and in this country, the, the written word of black history. Um, and that was something that, that um, had to you know, be fought for. Um, and then we're going to move to the 60s, um, these new radical historians and, and social science. So a lot of this is about um, this emergence of these cultural ethnic studies. Um, radical historians, it's just basically, um, it sounds a lot more radical, but basically any, or just historians that, that, that um, teach history um, from different, not not the typical Eurocentric, you know, top-down history, you know, so people, anyone that's teaching history from, from women's viewpoint or from indigenous viewpoint or black, you know, viewpoints. Um, and, and that's only radical because the norm is, is white supremacy. Um, and then we're trying to talk about critical race theory, this theory that emerged in the 80s, um, this realization that, you know, racism isn't just a bunch of people in hoods, it's, it's in institutions and systems. And, and, and so this new movement to kind of understand this better. 
Um, and then, uh, so we'll talk about the 21st century curriculum battles, the different curriculum battles around textbooks and, 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 and ethnic studies and things that are happening across this country. And then um, we're going to talk about just a handful of, of just like a really amazing um, efforts from like 1619 Project to decolonization efforts to, to you know, equal um, justice in initiative uh, around, you know, kind of on white, white washing our history. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat>